Firemen rescued me from a disgusting kidnapper. I was eight years old when my world flipped upside down, when a short walk home from school spiraled into a nightmare. My name is Emma, and this is the story of how I was abducted and the hero who came not with a cape, but dressed in the heavy gear of a firefighter. It's a tale that begins not with once upon a time, but with a moment that shattered the innocence of my childhood. It was a day like any other, with the sun hanging low in the sky, painting everything with golden hues. I was humming my favorite tune, my backpack bouncing with each step. That's when a car pulled up beside me. The driver, a man with a kind smile, asked if I needed a ride home. Naively, I thought of the kindness my parents always spoke about, the kind strangers who could be friends you haven't met yet. But as soon as I got into the car, I knew I had made a mistake. The man's demeanor changed as soon as the doors locked, and the kind smile twisted into something sinister. I wanted to scream, to run, but I was trapped. The car sped away, taking me further from everything I knew and loved. Hours turned into days, and I found myself in a cold, dimly lit room, with nothing but a small window too high to reach. Fear and despair became my constant companions. I missed my mom's warm embrace, my dad's laughter, and the safety of my home. I would whisper to myself every night, trying to remember their faces, afraid that I might forget them. Then, one day, amidst the deafening silence, I heard something different, the sound of sirens, followed by voices, authoritative and urgent. There was commotion, the sound of doors being forced open, and then footsteps approaching. That's when I saw him, a firefighter, with eyes that promised safety. He was part of a team that had been called to the building after reports of a fire. Instead, they found me. I remember the firefighter, Mr. Jackson, lifting me into his arms as if I weighed nothing, telling me that everything was going to be okay now. As we emerged from the darkness into the light, I squinted against the brightness, tears streaming down my face, not from fear, but relief. The air never tasted so sweet, and the embrace of my rescuer felt like a shield against the world. Mr. Jackson didn't leave my side until my parents arrived. The moment I saw them, running towards me, all the fear and pain seemed to melt away. I was home, safe in their arms, with the nightmare behind me. The firefighter gave me a gentle smile, a nod that spoke volumes of reassurance and strength. I hugged him, a thank you without words, for being my hero, for saving me from the darkness. The days that followed were a blur of police officers, questions, and a lot of hugs. I learned that Mr. Jackson, the firefighter who found me, had acted on a hunch, convincing his team to search the building thoroughly after the false alarm. His intuition saved my life. My abduction became a story of survival, a reminder of the dangers in the world, but also of the incredible bravery and kindness that exists. I don't remember much about the man who took me or the place where I was held, but I will never forget Mr. Jackson, the firefighter who saved me. To this day, I look up to firefighters not just as heroes who fight fires, but as guardians who can pull someone from the darkest of places into the light. As I grow older, the memory of my abduction and rescue remains a pivotal part of my life. It taught me about the fragility of safety, the strength of hope, and the unyielding courage of those who dedicate their lives to saving others. Mr. Jackson, and all the firefighters like him, are reminders of the light in the midst of darkness, the beacons of hope for every lost soul they come to save. Edit 1. Years have passed since the day I was rescued from the clutches of my abductor by a firefighter named Mr. Jackson. While the physical scars from my ordeal have faded, the mental and emotional ones have proven harder to heal. My name is Emma, and this is the continuation of my story, a journey through the aftermath of trauma and the path to recovery that led me to a place I never expected, a mental health institution. After my rescue, I tried to return to normal life, but the shadows of my abduction lingered everywhere. Nightmares haunted my sleep, turning rest into a battleground. Crowded places became a source of panic, and strangers' smiles twisted into threats. My parents, though endlessly supportive, were at a loss. They watched as the vibrant girl I once was retreated into a shell, jumping at shadows and flinching at unexpected touches. Despite therapy and the unwavering love of my family, the trauma I endured began to manifest in ways that couldn't be ignored. My schoolwork suffered, my friendships waned, and my laughter became a rare sound. Concerned for my well-being, my therapist suggested a more intensive treatment program, one that required my temporary stay at a mental health institution. The decision to go was not an easy one. The stigma surrounding mental health facilities loomed large in my mind, conjuring images of cold, sterile environments and isolation. But the reality was far different. The institution I was admitted to was a place of healing, filled with warmth and understanding. There, 
Surrounded by professionals and other young people like me, I learned that I wasn't alone in my struggles. My days were structured around therapy sessions, both individual and group, where I learned to unpack the trauma, to face it rather than flee from it. Art therapy became my refuge, a way to express the emotions that words couldn't capture. I met other kids who had faced their own battles, their own nightmares. Together, we shared our stories, our fears, and our hopes, finding strength in our shared vulnerability. One of the most transformative moments of my stay came from an unexpected source, a visit from Mr. Jackson, the firefighter who had saved me. He shared his own experiences with trauma, the fires he couldn't extinguish, and the lives he couldn't save. His honesty about his struggles and his journey to find peace was a turning point for me. It showed me that strength isn't just about carrying on but about having the courage to seek help when the weight becomes too heavy to bear alone. My time in the institution was not a period of confinement but one of liberation. I began to understand that my trauma didn't define me, it was just a part of my story. The therapists and staff provided me with tools to rebuild my sense of safety and trust in the world. I learned coping strategies for when the memories became too intrusive, ways to ground myself in the present, and, most importantly, how to forgive myself for not being okay. Leaving the institution was another step in my journey. I stepped back into the world with a newfound resilience and a deeper understanding of myself. The road to recovery is not a linear one. There are days when the shadows lengthen and the past feels too close. But now, I have a support system, a set of tools, and a belief in my own strength that I never had before. This story, my story, doesn't end with happily ever after, because healing is an ongoing process. But it's a testament to the fact that seeking help is not a sign of weakness but one of profound strength. The mental health institution, a place I once feared, became a pivotal chapter in my life, teaching me that from the deepest wounds can grow the strongest souls. As I continue to navigate the complexities of healing, I carry with me the lessons learned within those walls, that vulnerability is a form of bravery, that healing is within reach, and that, sometimes, the most heroic act is to allow yourself to be saved, not from the external dangers, but from the turmoil within. Edit 2. Years have unfolded since the chapters of my life were marked by trauma and healing, bringing me to a present that, at one point, I could hardly have dared to dream of. My name is Emma, and this is yet another continuation of my story, one that now thrives in the light of love, family, and resilience, but still faces the shadows of the past. Today, I am surrounded by the bustling energy of a family I've built with my wonderful husband, Alex, a man whose patience, understanding, and unwavering support have been my anchors. Together, we've created a world filled with laughter, chaos, and love, embodied by our five beautiful children. Each of them carries a piece of the strength and hope that have defined my journey, teaching me every day about the pure joy of living and the boundless capacity of the human heart to love after loss. Our home is a lively one, filled with the sounds of footsteps racing through the halls, spontaneous dance parties in the living room, and the nightly ritual of bedtime stories that weave tales of adventure and magic. In Alex, I found a partner who not only embraces the complexities of my past, but stands beside me as we navigate the challenges and triumphs of parenting together. He has been my rock, a testament to the fact that love can indeed triumph over darkness. Yet, despite the warmth and fulfillment that my family brings, the specter of my abduction looms in the recesses of my mind, a dark thread in the tapestry of my life. The man who stole my childhood innocence, though long since apprehended and confined behind bars, still finds a way to haunt my dreams. These nightmares, though less frequent than they once were, remind me of the fragility of safety and the enduring scars left by trauma. On the nights when the dreams come, casting their shadows over the peace I've found, I wake to the steady breathing of Alex beside me, the quiet murmurs of our children asleep in their rooms. It's in these moments, in the soft glow of the night light we keep in the hallway, that I find my grounding in the present. The fear that tightens around my heart begins to loosen its grip as I remind myself of the strength that carried me through the darkness, the same strength that has allowed me to build a life filled with so much light. I've come to understand that the journey of healing is not about eradicating the past, but learning to live with it, allowing it to be a part of your story without letting it define your entire narrative. The man who once held me captive in fear now serves as a reminder of my resilience, of the incredible journey from victim to survivor, and now, to a protector and nurturer of the new lives I've brought into the world. In the daylight, surrounded by my children's laughter and Alex's steady love, the shadows of my kidnapper lose their power. 
I've learned to embrace the complexity of my emotions, acknowledging the fear when it comes but also reveling in the joy, love, and fulfillment that define my life now. I share my story, both the darkness and the light, with my children, not to instill fear but to teach them about resilience, hope, and the power of overcoming. Our life, with all its imperfections and challenges, is a testament to the possibility of transformation and the enduring strength of the human spirit. The love within our family, the bond that ties me to Alex and our children, is my fortress against the nightmares, a beacon that guides me back to safety whenever the past threatens to encroach upon the present. This chapter of my life, filled with the everyday miracles of family, love, and resilience, is a declaration that though the past may shape us, it does not have to define us. The kidnapper may still haunt my dreams, but he cannot touch the reality I've built, a reality anchored in love, strength, and the unwavering belief in the possibility of new beginnings.